Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with a cool arcade repair video for you today. Joey, what have you bought? A very nice centipede. Look how nice. It's a, it's a, it's a centipede, we can tell that. But it, it's not much of one, Joe. It's, there's nothing left. You gotta have the vision. You, Joe, why is there... It looks like it was in a laundromat. That part was free. There's no monitor in it, Joey. I got monitors. You got monitors. All right, let's look on the back here. Go around here and look. It's looking kind of rough, Joe. It'll be nice. What's, what happened? What's going on here? I don't, I don't That's know extra. About. Just take that out of there. That don't even go in there. Take that out. You don't want to need that. Where's the other Oh yeah, that's good. Joe, that's not, this isn't going to work, Joe. Look, mm -hmm. something tried to get into it. That was Henry. What the heck is this? What have you, what are you doing, Joe? I don't know, you might have to repin that a little bit. <laughs> Won't be no problem. What in the hell? I think I, you don't think a mouse has been in there, do you? There's no game board, Joey. It can't be centipede with no centipede board. I think I know somebody to fix me a centipede board there. You see how this goes, people? Look. Look at this. They're, they're using electrical tape, Joe. You can't use electrical tape in this. Cr what are they doing? That's a professional job there. That power supply ain't going to work. I don't know. All right. Well, what's step one, Joe? You gotta start at the wall. <laughs> There's where we're starting. You want me to put a new cord on there? I think we vacuum it out first. <laughs> so. All right, we're gonna clean it up a little bit, and then we'll start at it at the wall, like you said. <laughs> Let's vacuum it. Did you fix it yet, Joe? Not yet. A lot better though. He cleaned the side art first. Uh, you know, you got a good point. It does look pretty good. It's in pretty decent shape, really, if you just check out the side art. And it doesn't have the front broke off like they do a lot of times. Nope. So yeah, this one might come back. Okay, we're gonna keep cleaning. All right, here's this side. It's a little, yeah, a little bit of water damage on the bottom, but you know, you run into that on everything. But it cleaned up pretty nice. Front is also not broken on this side. Nice vivid art. Look how scary. Look how fierce. Look how ferocious. So we're good. Everything cleaned up pretty good. Okay, so we got to start on the electrical stuff. So, we cleaned it up pretty good. Got rid of all the extracurricular dust bunnies. Uh, so we need to make a power cord, and we need to take that power brick out and uh, work on the big blue capacitor. So we'll pop that out, that'll be the first thing we mess with. All right, I'm gonna cap this monitor board. I always change the flybacks too on these, especially if they have the white knobs there. They've got some cracks in them, but that one doesn't really have any yet. But either way, if it's got the white knobs on them, I'll change it. And this has never had a cap kit. You can kind of tell by the caps. The blue ones were factory on a 7000. But these are usually pretty easy to work on. One of our favorite monitors. So I'm going to recap that, put a new flyback on it. Put it in that tube over there. Put tube in monitor and cabinet, and then we'll keep going. Well, I'm capping this monitor, and I realized that I never really went into the white knob thing. Usually, if it's got the white knobs, it's the original flyback. And a lot of times, they'll have a hairline crack above the focus, 
above the focus right around through here or down here below the screen well I was kind of surprised that this one didn't have hairline cracks because they pretty much always do at first glance it looks pretty good a lot of people wouldn't have changed it but then once you get it out BAM see that crack all the way down another one right there so it probably would have worked that way for a while but the problem is these white knob ones they'll drift so you can get it dialed in get it looking good come back in a half hour it might be brighter come back in another half hour it may look good maybe too dark come back in another half an hour the focus is all off so I just swap them I just change them this is what it's supposed to look like it's a new one and this one it's it's not going to die in our store it'll die after I sell it I deliver it I carry it up three flights of steps and then I plug it in everything's good I'll leave three days later they'll call me yep your monitors out I can hear the game playing but I just can't see it is there a bulb I can change somewhere you think there's a fuse can I get something like that at Walmart? I've heard it all. Just change the flyback. Just change the flyback. It's $30. Change it, and you're done. But I mean, if you're just selling a game on Craigslist or something, and you're just a shyster, I guess you could leave that other one on there. But to me, I, I'd rather just change the flyback, and then I don't have to worry about it. But anyway, to each their own. All right, next up we're going to do the big blue capacitor. We're also going to check all those fuses, clean them, make sure they're making good connection. We get these at, I don't know if you can guess where we get them, but arcadeshop.com. That is over 40 years old, that cap. And we just change them for preventative maintenance. If, if you don't change them, it may be okay, but sometimes you end up chasing your tail. You'll get a weird issue come along, and we've had that happen a few times, and it ends up being the big blue. So we just change them on all of our Atari games now. Not that big of a deal. Two screws, positive to positive, negative to negative. It's no big deal. That's how it looks from the bottom. So I'm going to put it back in the cabinet. I got to make another power cord. This one's seen better days. And we'll keep going. Well, I got all that back in there. So now I can test my monitor. But look at all that down there. That's going to be fun to fix. They chewed through all the control panel wiring. So about a foot's missing, so we got to go back in and fix all that.
All right, I got pretty lucky on that one. I went, that one went pretty good. Williams games take a lot longer. They're the worst, but that one went pretty quick. All right, I went ahead and put the control panel back on. I didn't film putting the overlay on because it's kind of tricky getting them on straight and I figured you would make me nervous <laughs> and I went ahead and put the the bezel in I had a used one for two reasons just to kind of get that buttoned up and also I like to get this back on the machine as soon as you can that way it'll keep this bin back here from, from coming loose and lifting up so it kind of clamps it in but it's starting to look pretty good so my monitor worked we always put new trackballs in them too you, you can buy a rebuild kit for about twenty five dollars but by the time you take the bearings all apart and swap them and all that, you can get a new trackball for about $50. Which I know that sounds, you know, it's twice as much. But a lot of times when you rebuild them, they still don't play as good as a new trackball plays. Because you got to think that the bearings are getting worn down, which are steel. The ball actually gets worn down too. And, you know, the case may be slightly different, the bearings that you order, and yada, yada, yada. So we just like to put a new trackball in there. But anyway, I'm going to hand it back to Ronnie, and he's going to fix up a centipede board tomorrow, probably. He's got a stack here waiting. I sure do. Um, luckily, over the years, I have amassed some uh, broken centipede boards. <laughs> And we're going to try to fix them. Now, I've been trying to get better at marking them. So I'm going to show you what we got, and then we're going to pick one to try to fix. I've gotten a little better at fixing them over the years because I'm starting to understand a little more how they work, a little more how they work, a little more how they work. And I love the Atari ones because they've got really good documentation. The schematics are fantastic. Um, so if you... It, it's possible to get good enough where you can fix about every Atari board because the schematics are so well well done. Um, so uh, I've got a bunch that I couldn't fix years ago, but maybe I can fix them now. What do you think? Now, we're not going to fix a bunch of them today. <laughs> but we need to fix one, don't we? All I need is one. Okay, so what are you looking at to decide if you can fix it? Well, you want to see if a bunch of work's been done to it before. That might make it harder to fix. And it kind of depends on if you did the work or someone else did. Now, this board here doesn't look like any work has been done to it except maybe one chip here. Which is no big deal. Okay, so somebody soldered one chip in. Um, it does look like it's in the right way. At least it's not in backwards. All right, I'm back. The people are driving me crazy, people. <laughs> the people are driving me crazy. So this one says, look, it's from 2013. So nine years ago, I wrote on here, and that's my handwriting. I can tell by how clean it is. Alphanumerics and motion objects are messed up. Well, now that I see that, I think I could probably figure that out. Because in nine years, I've learned a little more about it. It's missing all of the ROMs though, so at some point we took the ROMs off and put them on a different one. And it's missing the Pokey. The Pokey is now worth like 40 bucks or 50 bucks, something like that. It's also missing the EA ROM, which is what saves your high score. It'll work without that. Um, so the alphanumerics and the motion objects are messed up. This might be an interesting one to work on. So this is definitely a possibility. Okay, on to our next one. Are you ready? I'll bet you're excited. This one is a parts board. See how there's several chips missing? A bunch of the RAM have been pulled off. 
somebody has soldered something on the socket on the top. This thing, this thing would not be a good one to work on. Look, look at all the chips that are missing. So someone has parted out like half of this board. Okay? It does have four ROMs on it. We could probably check them to see, or it's got all the ROMs. We could probably check them to see if they're good. But And there's my EA ROM that I needed. EA Sports. It's in the game. Um, hmm. Doesn't really look all that hacked up on the back. So it, the day may come where we fix this one, but that day would not be today. Just for giggles, though, let's see how many chips have been stolen off of this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 28, and I might have missed these two, I can't remember. Um, and then they stole the Pokey and the CPU. Now I say they, it may have been me, I don't remember. Do you remember what you did nine years ago? I don't. Okay, here's one that's more recent. Look at this little baby. This appears to be complete. It says frozen garbage. And then it says June of 2021. So that was recently. I said frozen garbage. Now what does that mean? That means that the screen is just froze. Uh, there's there's and there's a bunch of garbage on the screen. It doesn't mean that this is actually garbage. This actually looks fairly clean. There's a little jumper here. So what probably happened was I got this in a lot of other ones and I just tested it out and I wrote that on it because I don't see that much has been changed in it. There is, actually I think that's a prom. Yeah, so see it's never been worked on. So that may be, um, sometimes whenever they're just completely messed up like that, it's easy to fix because something big is wrong. Like the CPU chip is bad. Uh, or the clock isn't working or something. If you're seeing garbage on the screen, though, usually the clock's working. Here's another one. <laughs> this one looks really clean. What am I missing? It's got everything on it. Um... Looks like it had a piece of tape there at some point that said something. Looks pretty clean. Look at this. See how that's discolored? Uh, well, that's not discolored. All of this is discolored. When you put these in the game, they had a, like a foam, a piece of foam that kept them from flexing. And so there was a foam block there at one time, and then the rest of it is darkened, maybe from smoke damage or something. But uh, that wouldn't really hurt the board. It does have a few chips that have been replaced. A couple there. Another one there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Looks like nine chips have been replaced. In its lifetime. Some of it would be like this RAM chip, for instance. Um, but that one, I think that's a very good candidate for repair. Okay. Moving right along. I hate it when they're not marked, so you know, we're going to mark some of them. This one has a pokey. It's missing the CPU. No big deal. It's missing one of the EEPROMs. Um, looks pretty good, though. So we're just looking for, like, major damage. A couple chips here have uh, corrosion damage on them. So what caused that? Probably that little foam block. A little bit of, like, a scratch there. Sometimes that'll cut through your traces. So how did that happen? Probably just being stored, like, you know, on a shelf or something. Now, of course, I didn't do it. <laughs> Don't blame that on me. I didn't do it. But uh, 
probably just a scratch on a shelf or in a box or something but it doesn't look that bad and I don't see any other major ones um, so that's very fixable so if you got one like this maybe you replace the three chips there that are a little corroded and she works maybe that's a good little candidate there though okay So this one says, works with the wrong colors, December 2017. So I did this one five, four years ago. It's missing the CPU now though, and it's missing one of the ROMs. Now what in the world happened there? It's had a lot of work done to it. Two chips, three chips, four chips, five chips, is that C8? Yep, so C8 has been swapped, which is the chip that uh, basically does the video output. So it looks like at some point I or whoever had gotten to the point where I was starting to work on um, trying to figure out that wrong color problem. That's a video. That's the video output. That's the video output. That's the video output. I think this one is too. Um, hmm. Yeah, A6 and B6 are the RAM that run the uh, the motion sprites. Um, that might be a good one to try again, see if we can figure it out after all these years. Okay, this one says, all H's displayed, but there's no date on it or anything. All H's displayed. Missing the pokey. Missing two of the ROMs. I suppose whenever I tested it, I had all the ROMs and the pokey in it. <laughs> um, but it hasn't really had any kind of repair work done to it. You can see the like the almost like the piece of tape from that freaking sponge thing. Might be very repairable though. So, so far we've only got one that's like, there ain't no way, you know? And then this one, I was just recently working on, had all kinds of issues and same thing, we ended up with a situation where it's got the wrong colors displayed and I can't figure it out to save my life. Um, so I'm gonna mark that one and we'll hang on to it for a while until I figure out how to fix all the wrong colors are displayed been messing around in the video section messing around on the signals that turn it on turn on the the uh, color ram and all that can't figure it out okay so uh, I want to keep this one complete so I'm gonna go ahead and mark it and put it to the side because I know what's wrong with it and then I'm gonna take one of these other ones and we're going to uh, get some ROMs working and uh, go from there so why don't we try This one that says all H's displayed that hasn't had any work done on it. I'll try putting a pokey in it and we'll start with the ROMs. Um, make sure that we've got a good set of ROMs and then go from there. This game's pretty good about testing the ROMs whenever you start it. Oh look, the crystal's been replaced. Um, it's pretty good about testing the ROMs in the test menu, but um, I think I'll, just, I'll use the um, EEPROM burner and check them by hand just to make sure that everything's cool. So uh, we'll start with this one. It's got a good looking edge connector too that isn't all burn up. So it'll be a good one to, to begin with. Here we go. Okay, so we've had people ask us before about how we you know check EEPROMs and stuff like that. And uh, uh, everybody has their own way of doing it, but um, we've got several EEPROM burners. One of our favorite ones is this old pocket programmer here by Intronics, right? We've got an eraser over there and stuff. So basically, uh, um, you can use the files from MAME, or a copy of the ROMs, the ROM uh, software on the board. So if you know which uh, file you need, right? Uh, you can verify it with a programmer. 
So what we're doing is there's a couple of the EEPROMs missing. So this is um, chip 309 out of the set that we need. So I can go in here and load the buffer with you know the chip we're trying to burn. I've got a copy here of the Centipede ROM. So load that up. Um, and then I've already burned it, but I can burn it again just to show you. And click program. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> Quickie, quickie, quickie. If I, um, you know, whenever you first put it in, you check to see if it's blank. This one isn't because we just burned a bunch of stuff to it. So there's thousands of little numbers in there. Um, but if I take another one here, let me swap one in. These these are twenty seven sixteens, which are kind of the hardest ones to burn, actually. Um, Let's see if this one's erased. If I can even get it in the EEPROM burner. You gotta get it in just right. These smaller ones, these you know, these are basically the oldest ones, the 2716s. There's you know, there were 2708s and stuff like that before it. Uh, I got a bent pin. That might cause me a problem. Uh, the older they are, the harder they are to burn. So these these uh, burn off of 25 volts is the voltage that it needs. Come on. What the hell? Of course, when I'm trying to show somebody what I'm doing, I get one with a bent pin. Get in there. It's your home. Okay. All right, so it's in there. So let's see if she's blank. What we end up with is we we end up with a bunch of files that are, I mean, a bunch of chips that are damaged where they won't really burn. So my next one I need is 310. So this may fail whenever it tries to burn. Let's see if it'll burn. Because it, it basically it's trying to create 25 volts off of a 9 volt uh, wall board. <laughs> So I was doing some crazy stuff in here to make it have 25 volts. And if it's just not right or the chip's not happy, it'll fail. And then you got to try another one. But it doesn't take very long. So we'll see if this one will program or if it fails on us. All right, so we got the right file loaded. It's going slow. It's going slow. 300. 400. 500. 600. 700. Oh, it did it. Okay, so what I do usually is I burn it twice. Just burn it again. You can burn it for three times. <laughs> sometimes sometimes you run into problems where it, it uh, one of those little uh, windows or one of those little ones wants to be a zero or something, right? It verifies at the end of it, but we can verify it as many times as we want. Everything seems cool. Seems to me like that's a Centipede 310 now, right? Sometimes it'll crash halfway through burning it. You can stop and just try to reburn it again. Sometimes that'll work, sometimes it won't. As long as you get to the end and you can verify it to the file and everything's cool, then you're good, right? Um, so that's kind of how we do it. So I'm going to put a label on the... Uh, on the EEPROM. And we've had people in the past ask us um, about putting stickers over the windows. Yes, of course we put stickers over the windows if we're burning them or if it's a, you know, if a, uh, we've got them all out or, or whatever. But they don't necessarily have to have a sticker over the window. Some of the original boards, they never put them on there. So it's, it's, a, it's a thing. It's a good idea to do it. But it's not the end of the world. But since we're burning new ones, yeah, I'll put a I'm going to make a little label and put it right over the window just to make sure no light leaks in there and erases it. Um, but we kind of joke around with people about that. Uh, so I've got all of my EEPROMs burned. Everything, the ones, six, uh, four of them that were on there verified and were, were already fine. Um, so the way you would do that is, um, you know, this one, you know, we've burned now. So now this is my 310, right? So I've got that. You put it in off of the board. You load the file that you want. We've loaded up 310. Um, and then you just verify it. And it says it verified the buffer. So the, the file that's in the buffer verifies to the file that's in the chip. You know, And there's about 
a hundred different ways of doing this in different programs. Some people like other ones better. Um, we've got about four different ones that we use, but we, we like this one. It's pretty good. Some people use the even older ones that use the like a dedicated, um, what do they call those, ISA cards inside of a computer to be a burner. And those are cool too. I just I never used them back in the day, so I don't know much about them. But some people, that's kind of what they learned on, and that's what they like. The older the card is, pretty much, usually, the better it is for arcade games because we're dealing with old chips. So these are 2716s. That's a little tiny chip, you know. Um, but if you need to do uh, more modern stuff, you know, that's like a 16 megabyte. Well, that's not even that modern, but... <laughs> It's more modern than this. If you need to do more modern stuff, like the Capcom stuff from the 90s and stuff like that, the chips were much larger, and you may not be able to do it on this programmer without an adapter, you know. So it kind of just depends on what you do more often. We do a lot of Pac-Man boards or some there, and Centipede and stuff like that, and they use these old chips, 2716s, 2732s, 2532s, 2764s. 27 128 27 256 27 512 and that's about as big as we usually get um, and this will do all of that kind of stuff you can go into change the uh, the device and there's a whole bunch of you know you can make, and it does go up a little a little bit um, but we like that it actually can burn the 2716s a lot of the programmers we've used can't because they can't burn something that used uh, 25 volts back in the day. Okay, so I'm going to pop those back in the board, and then we'll put it in the cabinet and test it and see if it does come up with all H's all over the screen. All right, folks, so it took a while, but we were able to get the board working. Now, it took so long, though, that I'm going to break that out and make a whole other video about just the board repair. But as you can see, she's up and running great. I think it turned out pretty nice. We'll have to play it a little bit just to make sure. I love working on these centipedes though. They're just, they're cool. Who doesn't like centipede? Now at the moment, we happen to have the upright centipede. And by the way, there are two types of upright centipedes. They have different colors. Like this is the one with the purple background and the side art has a yellow trim around the centipede. Some of them I think it's purple on the side. Okay. And then we've also got this little cabaret here. Look at this one. How cool is that? So it's the smaller version. But, but, but wait, there's more. We also have this cocktail version. So we've got several centipedes in right now. As a matter of fact, we've got every form factor. <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right, so let's play it a little bit um, since we finally got it finished. I mean, why why even fix them if you're not going to play them, right? we got to play it and try it out. All right, folks. So we'll play through it a little bit and see what she's like.
over and kill him, but I thought I thought he would bounce over far enough where I'd get him. Spider got me. Well, it says great score. I think they're just being nice, though. They probably want me to give them another quarter or something. All right, folks, so there you go. What a cool game. Wow. What a classic. What a classic. Good old centipede. Centipede and centipede. Awesome. Okay, folks, hope you enjoyed the video. We took that one from zero to hero, didn't we? Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. Leave your comments down below. And by the way, if you want to support the channel, a way that you can do that, a lot of people have been doing it, is go check out our parts page. Go to lionsarcade.com. At the top of the page, we have a parts page. It's got a link to a bunch of the things that we use in our uh, repair videos and things. And you can check those out. It's got some of our t-shirts and stuff like that on there too. But if you don't need to buy anything, that's cool. If you just click one of those links, a lot of those will take you to Amazon. And if, if you find yourself on Amazon after clicking one of our, link, our links, uh, anything you buy on Amazon, even if it's what you normally buy, like your, uh, your favorite pair of, uh, of uh, Adidas sneakers, or earlier, somebody bought a garden hose, right? So if you're going to buy anything on Amazon, uh, click our link first, and it gives us about 3% or something like that of whatever you purchase. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing, doing that. Thank you very much. And last but not least, don't forget to check out my brother, Donnie. My brother has his own channel here on YouTube. We do uh, arcade games, pinball machines, and jukeboxes. My brother, Donnie. Uh, does old buildings, old cars, old trucks, stuff like that. It's very cool. I'm over there with him a lot. He's crazier than I am. So I hope you enjoyed the video. We will see you on the next one.